This is MFT Raw and here's some camera news. Retro cameras are in at the moment with the release of the Olympus EP7 earlier this month, as well as Fuji and quite a few others releasing products that are throwbacks to days past. Nikon are the latest big name expected to release a mirrorless Z mount camera with a cool vintage look. But judging from these leaked images of what is expected to be called the Nikon ZFC, rather than just go for old school looks, the ZFC is also offering old school handling. First of all though, we need to address these looks. Yeah, it is a bit hard to get a full overview of how it looks, but the pictures reveal enough for me. It looks just about perfect. Silver in color, but with what looks like leather on the top, Hopefully that's not real leather, but at the same time, it does need to be a durable material. I do like the exposed screws that we see here. And in this shot, we can see that it's got a fully articulating touchscreen. These flippy screens are really popular right now with even the higher end cameras going for it. So, I mean, I personally love them and I don't know why it's taking so long for them to really catch on. They just make life so much easier. Even this eye cup has a nice vintage look to it, but it's this top photo that is most interesting to me because it does give away a lot about the handling of this camera, offering three physical control knobs, giving you control of ISO, shutter speed, and exposure compensation, as well as a secondary dial to select between manual, aperture, and shutter priorities, and program mode. You might think, don't all cameras have these dials on the top? How is this different? Well. Yes, all cameras do have dials on the top, well, most of them do, but with modern cameras having so many features, they're usually there to switch between some of the various shooting modes in the camera. And the essential camera functions are assigned to buttons or to rollers for efficiency and speed. But what I like about this is that it's given you the basic controls needed to get your shot in those dials, which should result in a more analog, a slightly slower, but a more measured picture taking experience. The camera is expected to be released at the end of this month, so not too long to wait. And if it does well, I would bet that we'd start to see many similar types of cameras coming from the big name manufacturers. Personally, I hope it really does do well. I would love to see the other big names coming in with cameras like this, especially if they go for a more analog approach when it comes to their controls. The only question is, will they release any retro looking lenses to go with it or will we have to make do with some of the old school glass? I mean, how annoying would it be to see one of these beautiful old school looking cameras with a modern Z mount lens stuck to it? Hopefully they would have gone for an all metal build, unlike Olympus with the EP7. Some people are really disappointed that it ended up being made of plastic, but you could always argue that the plastic does make it a little bit lighter and a little more pleasing to handle, but I think that's a load of rubbish. I think a solid metal build is much more preferable than being a super lightweight camera, especially for this kind of money that they're asking, 750 pounds for the EP7. There's a story going around at the moment about the Xiaomi Mi 11 phone and how it can take amazing shots of the moon. And I wanted to mention this story because it seems like it is a genuine photograph of the moon when taken with a smartphone and you really get a lot of detail in it. It is a really incredible shot. And I believe that this is one of the very first images that we're seeing from a smartphone that truly depicts the moon. Now, bear with me a minute. I have reviewed a lot of smartphones in my time lots of them with high magnification zooms up to 100 times zoom like with the Samsungs. So I've taken many shots of the moon with a smartphone and one thing that they all, well, almost all of them had in common is that you would never see the details along the Terminator line on the moon. If you look at the moon through a high powered optical lens when the moon is not full, along the line where the light meets the shadow, you will see the details of the craters. Actually, what you will see is the actual shadows of the craters being cast along the moon. But this is only when the moon isn't full. The shot with the Mi 11 seems to show that detail and honestly I've never seen it there with a smartphone and I don't think it's because of the angular resolution why you can't see those craters. It just seems to be because those images are superimposed over the, the whatever light source you're pointing your phone at. That is what it seems like. I know that does sound like a bit of a conspiracy theory but honestly it's really not the first time that smartphone makers have used software to simulate the effect that they're claiming their phone can produce. For example, how many phones claim to be able to shoot video at 960 frames per second? Almost all of them, right? How many phones actually shoot video at 960 frames per second? Probably about two different brands, namely Sony and Samsung. There may be a few others. Almost all of the other phones that claim to shoot video at that high frame rate actually shoot at about 30 frames per second and then they use software to simulate the other frames, a technique called frame interpolation. So with that kind of track record, the theory of smartphone makers cheating to give you a good shot of the moon really isn't too far-fetched. So Xiaomi have managed to produce what looks like a legit image of the moon complete with the Terminator line detail. 
I thought at least this was noteworthy and worth a mention. Chinese lens makers are getting better and better, and with that their prices are steadily climbing. They're still very affordable, but they're slowly becoming more like what you would reasonably expect to pay for a lens. The latest offering from Yongnu is a 25mm f1.7 micro four thirds lens. Unlike many other Chinese lens makers, this one has autofocus and surprisingly it doesn't attempt to undercut the established competition. Well, not by very much. You can find this one on Amazon right now for about £125. Now that seems pretty fair to me, auto-focusing, wide aperture lens, but if you shop around, you can find the equivalent lens from Panasonic or from Olympus for roughly the same price. This is gonna come down to quality, really. It seems like a comparison is needed. If you ask me, the Panasonic 25 F17 is a little bit underwhelming, especially when you compare it to its more pricey Leica version, the 25 F1.4. I've not used the Olympus, so I can't really speak to that, but the Pani does leave a little bit of room for improvement. So potentially, the young new could be pulling off an upset here. And to end on a light note, I got this story for you from a couple of years ago, admittedly, but I thought it was really funny. Check this out. A Korean cameraman manages to outsprint the entire field in this 100 meter race, just trying to keep ahead of them whilst trying to shoot video on a handheld stabilizer. This is dedication, watch this. Zolan is not out of it either. It's anybody's race. Can anyone catch Milangeni? Oh, maybe somebody can. Is that our cameraman? He's matching him stride for stride. He's run the whole race with that camera on his shoulder. Just incredible. Milangeni will get the gold. The cameraman, the glory. I wonder if he went on to get a job as a sprinter or a job as a cameraman. Do you know what? I'm going to do my best to find out. And if you want to find out about the cheapest way to get a 7 to 14 millimeter ultra wide angle lens for your micro four thirds, camera then click on this video here or if you want to find out where to find the very best camera gear then I suggest you click this video here thanks guys make sure you like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video peace